Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm out here at El Dorado Park Golf Course in Long Beach, California with one of the top instructors in the world named Dana Dahlquist. Oh, thank you. Good friend of mine. Well, Way too nice. You're on the list. You're on the list. <laughs> uh, and, um, well, when you say one of, it's like well, I'm, one of a thousand, one yeah, of ten. I'm no, a, he, he's, he's high, up, high up there on the list. I'm a range rat. For sure, a, a swing a swing centric guy like when you when you talk about like you as a coach uh -huh. you're like specifically a swing coach right pretty much yeah. pretty much yeah. yeah yeah one of these days you've taught chris gilman and some of my friends some very weird and interesting short game shots mm -hmm. and i don't think a lot of people talk to you about and i saw bo doing one of these the other day mm -hmm. that i've seen him on tv and he wasn't doing it before and it looked like and actually what bo was doing the other day leads us into the topic that we're talking about today uh -huh. so this i think really boils down like if you're looking for a golf instructor and you want to figure out uh, what their philosophy is i think this is the for me the best question to ask them so dana this is my question for you okay. is at address i'm so we get, let's get a ball yeah at address i'm here and i'm on this kind of plane here so let's yeah. just call that 40 degrees or whatever it is yeah. here and then that would be 40 degrees there and there so at address i'm here yeah. at impact i'm maybe slightly higher but it's let's just say for argument's sake that the plane's the same at impact okay you know for argument's okay. sake okay um when i make little pitch shots i can stay on this plane like that and i can hit it pretty darn good but once I take it away and my right elbow has to bend, I can't really stay on this first no, plane. No, no, right. No, 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 no. So my question for you, and, and this is the question I, I ask every teacher that comes on the channel now. As a teacher, what do you do when this right elbow is bent? What do you do to get back to this plane, which is now the functional swing plane or, or how some people are calling it? Yeah. What do you get back to it athletically? without getting over it or under it. So somehow I got to go from here to here yeah, and see how those planes, like this plane is on this kind of level and then I'm going to have to yeah. get back. So athletically as a coach, what do you do to get back onto that plane? Okay. So I'm going to throw a caveat in front of that. Okay. So let me see your Yeah, yeah. So this is a six iron. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we have like a six iron, let's just say at impact, let's say the tour average is at less than 60 degrees so let's say it's 57 58 something like that you're talking about down the line up yeah. and down this way yeah. okay so they yeah. call it the vertical swing plane yeah so this is this is 90 right and this is zero and this yeah. is 45 yeah. so we're at 60. so atypically um over the years um this is prior to like TrackMan coming out okay nobody i don't care what they say <laughs> nobody really understood the d plane okay mm -mm. they had notions of it yeah but they didn't understand angle of attack right because it was never measurable they didn't really understand the horizontal swing plane and the vertical swing plane of the golf club okay yeah you would hear like nicholas say like okay i aim the face where i wanted to finish and i aim my feet where i wanted to start or, or and other, other people would say other things like that but they were more like like grandpa style anecdotes to get you to shape yeah, the and ball. that yeah. is it's all anecdotal yeah. right and every player has that programmed and, and it's fine and there could be a feeling real disconnect totally, for sure totally. yeah. and it could be fine the problem is is like do, when we go actually trying to do that you end up not being able to control where the ball goes right so that was the advent of track man that no matter how good your eyes were okay no matter how good your camera was you couldn't see angle of attack and you'd misdiagnose what the outcome would be okay 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 now probably at that point in time probably the best thing to do is not worry about that and if you're good enough and you figured it out feel wise you can get a, a better outcome problem is if you misdiagnosed we create an issue okay. so swing plane time so if if i was to come in at 58 degrees with a iron mm -hmm. okay we have to kind of put in front of that spin loft Okay, that's like you have to. Yeah. So good example when you're talking short game. So in short game, really good players that hit finesse shots have a very big spin loft. Yeah. Because they have a lot of face rotation, open face, mm -hmm. more down. Spin loft being the difference between angle of attack and, and loft and Dynamic impact. loft, right? Yeah. So I would say that the, the higher handicap players have the most spin loft when they hit a driver. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's so just, they're hitting down like this and the loft's like this. So the difference is like that. Correct. So you're going to get launch issues, uh -huh. 
spin issues oh, yeah. and curvature issues. Now the flip side on the bell curve is going to be the better player. Okay, so the best players have that lowest. Now, so they, their their angle of attack is going more like this, and their loft is matching that. So then right. their spin loft is the very tightest. tight within yeah. reason. Right? Yeah, yeah. We need some spin on the yeah. wall to keep it in the air. I think and John Rounds a real good example of perfect, a super yeah. low. Yeah. Right. So I think like if we understood that, and we, then now we can actually understand the dynamics at impact. Okay. So at impact, you're gonna have, okay, you're gonna have some shaft lean with a left wrist that's seeking extension mm -hmm. whereas a high handicap has extension heading into more extension and face roll flip whatever you want to call it right but the best players go into flexion and then they have some shaft lean that has to head into extension because the club has to accelerate yeah okay so we don't want to hold that right, right, right. because then you don't have enough angular for force in the club to accelerate it. okay so the good the good players are going here and then in transition they're getting more they're getting a whole lot more and then when it's fully loaded, then it comes then out. It goes. I think so like DJ. Vilko Nina Bar is maybe the most yeah, biggest example, example of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like this and this way. Yeah. So now for since we know that, yeah. um, now we can talk about what the right arm does. Okay, so yeah. if if a player goes back and the right arm basically bends and folds to a degree, okay, mm -hmm. and increases that angle as it comes down. It will stay somewhat wide, but it still has angle to it. And as you come down, you're not going to straighten that out because then what happens is you lose that spin loft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you increase your spin loft. Yeah, yeah. The like the that. loft gets more. Right. And then your your downward hit gets more. Correct. So that. Correct. So what will happen is this thing will load. Right. Right arm will fold some, and then as you're rotating, that's actually going to stay somewhat bent. And then a typically my handle, because my arm is bent, is actually higher than it was at address. It can't be the same unless you're a cutter. Okay, so so address here, impact there. So the, the arm's more bent, you're more open, other stuff like that. So yes, it's higher, it's higher. on a higher plane, yeah. So, okay, so, so you've made the task already easier for us, mm -hmm. knowing that, okay, it's here at address doesn't mean that I have to do something to totally get back there. I can no. be higher and still be you know all the uh, most of the best ball strikers in the world are a little well, higher jack nicholas iron. and tiger woods okay there you they go they were pretty good at golf oh yeah 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 so um so that's already made it higher so that's a, that's going to be easier to, what else do you like to do to be able to well to we get have back there? we have this idea also that remember you're also pushing out of the ground okay so mm -hmm. if i'm pushing out of the ground i'm probably pushing out of the ground at halfway down mm -hmm. so that push off the ground for me to push up and back to rotate is also going to raise the handle, right? So the handle, if I'm if I'm trying to just stay down the whole entire time, I'm not using the advantage of pushing off the ground and rotating. Yeah, you see that with people, especially internet affected people, when they're really trying to get shaft lean, they go correct that way. Correct, yeah. and it, we call that a handle drag. Yeah, and I, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that that okay, I'm not saying that you shouldn't look for that because uh -huh. you should but it should be more of not trying to get there and let it be more of a result. <laughs> that's the, that is the line I hear from every coach. Cause I'll, I'll be working on shaft lean and they'll say, yes, you want shaft lean, but don't try to get shaft lean. I'm like, where does this exist in life otherwise? Yeah. You want that girl, but you better not go for that girl. <laughs> this has always been backwards to me. I like, okay, I want shaft lean. Why is it bad for me to try to get it? Okay, well, so that goes back to the original conversation. Okay. okay? So what does the highest handicap player have swing direction wise? I think left. Left. Yeah. Okay. So the sweet spot's coming out. Uh-huh. So the more the sweet spot comes out, where's the left wrist heading? Into extension. Right. So mm -hmm. if I do the opposite and I want to hit a draw, sweet spot's behind, mm -hmm. left wrist is in flexion. Mm -hmm. Now inherently for me to get this club head to the ball, I'm gonna rotate. There it is. Okay. So I don't have to like manipulate. Yeah independent action on the grip right because if you kept the motion going left and all you did was add this then you're going to shank it or you're going to do other done. things yeah done. there's just no, no good shots will yeah. come from that absolutely okay cool that was easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that part was so what do you tell people to do they're at the top right and they do want to get lower than this right or no what do you mean they're on this plane yeah and they want to get to a lower plane yeah 
the way I used to think of your instruction like three, four years ago, I thought you would like to be, people would be here then to go super wide and bow the wrist and they're so wide that that gets them back to this plane and then they okay. really open. So let's, let's back up on that. That's really good. Okay. So, um, and it's actually good that you said that because that's interpretation and yeah, I want to yeah. be clear on that. Right. Okay. So what's actually happening is you have mass here, center mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I'm landing, turning, and I'm applying force to that grip yeah. through my rotation, mm -hmm. okay? If, because look, if I just say that, people go, well, rotation doesn't shallow the club. Okay, yeah, I get that. But alignments give you a better perspective to do that. Okay. So if my alignments are okay up here, then when I do rotate, my right arm will go external. I'll keep retraction, trail shoulder, and the mass of the club actually helps lower the shaft to the inside. Right. Passive torque, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's because you you're moving. A lot of good coaches talk about this, like kind of reversing earlier than you think. Correct. So you're moving one way, and the and the club is Correct. maybe not maybe not going backwards, but relative to your center, it is. Oh, well, 100 percent. A lot. It has yeah. to. It yeah. Has to. You don't want it to go together. Right. Because then it's out here. Yeah. But yeah, the the change of direction will make that happen, mm -hmm. and then because of that, when I come down. Now I have good trail arm mechanics, good right wrist mechanics. Oh, uh, okay. And that's that's how that works. All right. So I was kind of right in the in the positions of it, but totally wrong in that I'm not pushing and seeking that position. Right. It's it's the Milo talks about this. You go right left, and then that change of direction kind of sets things because when this plane, everything deeper is also closer to the plane you want to be on an impact. Yeah. Right. Let, let, and let's just also say there's no there's no plane. Okay. There's no such thing as the swing <laughs> plane. Just not just not do that. <laughs> okay. I, it, it's good for maybe interpretation. So Ben Hogan w just has the, has the plane of glass going through his neck. Yeah. And uh, that was his almost deal. every teacher that you go for like a you know like a, a seventy five dollar lesson at a golf course will take a video on their iPhone and they'll show you they'll draw a line mm -hmm. to start here. And then a lot of guys go from the heel up your kind of right forearm and then from the toe up your neck. And they yeah. say, you want to be in this V sure. to, to hit it. So yeah. why is there no swing plane? Because the thing's moving at all vectors at all times when you do that. So, okay. so when I go here and I go here and I go here, my hands aren't on a line. The mass isn't on a line. It's displacing off the line to create energy. So I don't, I don't per se say swing plane. Okay. I have somewhere between like halfway down between the elbow and the shoulder. Yeah. And then within those ranges, there's particular matchups for those ranges. Okay. okay. But if we start getting to, oh, I have to be here, that just kind of fits you in a box and okay. then you can't react. It's kind of dangerous because it also, what shot am I hitting? So you're saying swing plane is a whole lot like impact. It's not something you want to chase, but it's something that'll show up if your concentration's in the right area. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so if I want to hit this ball, uh -huh. I don't want to say on a good plane, but if I, if I want to work on this, and yep. so I like to put it into action now. Let's just go to our over the top Be Better Golfer, where they're up on this, they're up here, and they're kind of staying on it, or they're getting over it, and they want to get it more in the slot, whatever you want to say, like, you know, a, a, on a, a little lower plane yep. coming down, what, what do you, what do you well, tell them to try to do? First off, so go to the top of your swing for a moment. So when you, when you start feeling yourself get up here mm -hmm. and it starts to go, your pressure is going to land into the lead foot, right? Because mm -hmm. you're forward. Yeah. So that's horizontal. Now start turning your lower body. And then see how this left arm is kind of pinning? Oh, okay. And then you're going to feel this fall behind your oh, body. Okay. Yeah. Keep rotating. And now your handle's forward. Oh, this, so this gets into like a takeaway thing where you can't get, if I had a... Uh, Somebody did this the other day with like packing stuff from Amazon. You know those those air pillows. Okay. They put it in between here. So here, if this is this is here, you don't want this on the takeaway. This to get totally pinched early. No, 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 no. Because if it's pinched early, any body motion makes it over. Yeah. So you're saying that if this is an air pillow or something like that, it should feel like that's getting a nice light, a nice lot of space here, and then it's your reversing of motion that crunches this yeah here just like you swing up any other object so i go this way yeah like that correct and it's the reversing of motion that and you have to be careful um and, and this is just for you yeah this is not for you know everybody 
So when you did that, you still had a sense that you needed to create power through the hands. So that you mean you, float it? Yeah, you okay. tried to, to drag. Now remember, this thing is rebounding. This is loading, oh, okay. and then it, it, you're not trying to drag this thing. Oh. I would let that thing go. Yeah. I've seen you do this move. I have. Uh, I've seen people who watch your Instagram. I should say do this. Yeah, that drives me mad. <laughs> yeah, they watch your videos and they're like, yeah, I want to get. I'm getting impact there and rotating. Yeah. So, so I mean, no. that's just happening. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going soft here and more that way. Yeah. I can get rid of that. So change, have a lot of space here, change directions that kind of shallows it. And then you like a little bowing too. Yeah. It'll happen. It, the bow. It right. should with the rotation. It should so, happen. Oh, nice straight shot. Better. Yeah. Cool. That's improved in a week. So there you go, guys. Dana didn't really accept my whole premise of the question. <laughs> so it took, it took a while to answer, but I think, I think that is really kind of the uh, foundation of what Dana teaches is, is a lot of times you have to go all the way back to, okay, like, well, what is your concept? You know, a lot of people who watch these, these videos and, and other videos online get really st f caught up into like, okay, let's freeze this picture, draw lines on it and stuff like that. I think Dana, you would have been guilty of that 20 I, years ago, right? Oh, easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, why I teach golf. Right, right. I mean, I'm being honest. It, so, it got you out of playing golf into teaching very golf. Very quickly. And, yeah. And, and, but, but here's the thing is like, every answer I, I would go to, every coach I go to, not, and it's no fault of their own, Yeah. nobody knew. Mm -hmm. I wasn't one of the lucky ones that did this really well. Yeah. And so then when I would, everybody's, oh, get the club in front of you. Like, okay, well that, that's so unfunctional. Yeah. So now I'm teaching golf. Yep. And so I, I think it's, and it's, like I said, it's not. When it's you said nobody knew, nobody knew about these. At least the ones that I asked. Unviewable forces that, ha right. that have to happen first both right. ways. That's why it's yeah. beautiful where we are right now. Yeah. It's like, for a guy like me, I want to know why. Yeah. And I think, and a lot of people do. So, and that's why they make the equipment that they make. That's why the dynamics of the club do what they do. Yeah. It kind of matches up. And so now you, these kids are getting better and better and better. Yeah. So I, I think it's a good thing. And the feedback Great. tools, the sign, yeah, unbelievable. unbelievable. You make it, making the, the level of golfer you can be. Yeah. I'm really hoping the feedback stuff doesn't just make Xander Shoffley into like a much better golfer. I'm hoping that it makes like, you know, like a 10 handicap actually, you know, like a it does Three, on it, you know yeah it does on all spectrums i think yeah. it's good that xander uses stuff like swing, swing catalyst which he does mm -hmm. and um so he does use uh you know gc quad and he uses a lot of things that help him but that information does go to the the beginner yeah and so that it it takes the entry point of golf which was somewhat more difficult maybe five years ago and makes it easier yeah the more exposure of data that we get makes yeah. it that much easier to do it right now look i and i'm critical on the romantic side of golf where yeah, people sure. are like oh you know you don't need to do all that swing your swing yeah like, a famous golfer said arnold palmer it sounds yeah. good yeah right arnold palmer yeah yeah arnold was, palmer can swing his swing he was sure. he was swinging at two and a half years old yeah yeah it, it just the reality check is like look on that bell curve for the guys that's on this side that are in the tour caliber or they're like super good athletes and they have good proprioception for whatever reason, the rest of us have to basically be taught. Yeah, because somebody said, somebody wrote, swing your swing on Twitter. And uh, somebody, it might have been Club Pro Guy or somebody who said, swing your swing. Uh, I'd rather swing Louis Oosthuizen and swing. It would seem to do a lot better for me. Very true. So uh, a swing, the best version of yourself, I think, would, right. be the, would be the best thing. All right, so you guys can check out more about Dana Dahlquist at danadahlquistgolf.com. Follow him here on YouTube. I'm trying to encourage Dana to do more YouTube videos, and he has a plan already to do that. So you're going to want to subscribe to him on YouTube and follow him on Instagram. Just Dana Dahlquist, his name is his at. Thanks for watching, everybody.